Uh, fortunately, it's not just one thing. Um, so, but initially, obviously, it's it's uh, it's education. It's it's our youth. It's you know it's connected to our young people. So um, that immediately is always you know the first um, you know element that that uh, that grabs my interest. So, um, but in addition to education, I think it's the simple fact that uh, this is about our future, all of us really. I think collectively, you know, our young people obviously are the future, but we even in the now, I think it's our future as well because it all depends on how we invest in them, how we invest in integrating. I think sometimes there's a huge generation gap, you know, young people don't get what they need because they're disconnected from the people who have the information, but then there's this complaint that young folks aren't doing what they're supposed to do, but I think a lot of that is our responsibility, you know, and, and it's our fault, so to speak, for lack of a better description. So I just thought it was a creative way and a, a proactive way of taking the message to the people, so to speak. You know, a lot of times there's information that's there, but it's always dependent on people knowing, you know, already knowing where to go to get it. So I think you have to actively take a responsibility to take the information to the people, take the um, be the resource and be accessible to the you know community so also to do this with other industry peers and the diversity and the backgrounds and some of the other skills and you know gifts and talents that people have to do that and be able to give our young people a variety of different perspectives um, you know naturally as an artist as an educator as an entrepreneur all these things that I have I'm able to you know pass all of that on at every opportunity um, I think the the workshop that I do about careers in the creative arts. Um, there's also the financial, you know, literacy piece that's highly important. And also I just think being a human being, just life skills, you know, citizenship, uh, excellence, self-discipline, self-determination, um, all these things are, I think, very important to impart. And I think this framework just gives us the opportunity to to do a multitude of different things in the simplicity of this, you know, of this program and this approach. One of the things that, that has been so clear um, through these tours is that so long ago, UNCF came with, up with a mantra, mind is a terrible thing to waste. And, I think most of us would agree that that's true. But, but an opportunity is such a terrible thing to waste as well. And, and I think that so often, our young people are given opportunities that they don't take for granted. And so it's exciting for me to be able to meet young people that want to take advantage of the opportunities that are put before them, that don't want to make excuses for where they may be or for why they can't do something. They, they want to say, yes, they can, not in some kind of cliche way, but with their actions. And um, if we can in any way provide some insight um, about a new way, I think, to work, because I think so often many of us have been told to work hard. Um, and that's nonsense. You need to work smart. And the, the people who work smart will hire the people who work hard. And I, I'm hoping that there can be some real practical information that's, that's given through our experiences uh, that will help you know how to work hard, but more importantly, be strategic enough to work smart. Uh, when it comes to that opportunity that, uh, that Jeff is, is uh, mentioning, I think education is the key to opportunity. It opens that door, it opened that door for me. Uh, luckily, I was privileged enough to be part of uh, a community where uh, the, the lessons that were being taught to me uh, went beyond just my parents, you know. So when I left the house, those things were still being <laughs> reinforced. I, you know, it was like, oh, man, I can't go nowhere without, you know. I was like stuck. I got, I got knocked upside the head by anybody, you know. And my mom would give people permission. If he acts a fool, knock him upside his head. So that helped to carry on throughout my life, throughout high school, throughout college. And, and beyond. And uh, I think without that, without that value system, without really prioritizing education, uh, I don't know that any of the things that I've done since then would have, you know, the relative success and the degree of success that they've had. I think it's all built on 
a foundation of, of having a, a, a good education. I would just say that I think there is so much to gain outside of the classroom, even in the educational environment. And so the best thing that ever happened to me in college was not what I did in the classroom. I, I went to school on a track scholarship. I was all American and wanted to go to the Olympics and I had a track coach who was a jerk because um, he told me, he said, I want you to run track and go to class. I'm like, you know, this ain't even a revenue sport, man. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, and how I do wish that I had had that, um, that to fall back on in case that other career never happens for me again, and still using my gift and combining with that education. So I'm encouraging you all to stay in and at the same time, really educate yourself on what your passions are so you can combine that book knowledge with that world knowledge and that spirit knowledge. Can I stay? Can I stay now? Okay, yeah. stay. Yeah. All right, I can stay. I just wanted to quickly, uh, and I and I and I agree with, with uh, what Jeff said. Uh, instead of being redundant here, um, I just wanted to stress one important point about the educational pro educational process uh, being more than only academics. And I know you've heard this a billion times from everybody. Stay in school, get your bucks. And after a while, it gets a little bit too much. The educational process means uh, take advantage, use it as a catalyst to, to open your minds about things. Uh, the way you socialize with your peers, that's, that's an educational process in itself. Um, you know, you're traveling the world, there's so many things out there that we have no idea about at that age. Uh, we're on a global um, uh, uh, platform now. The internet has provided so many pathways that are instant that we, have, we can have contact with somebody in China in real time. Um, so those kind of things are what the educational process should be about. That's way more than numbers, way more than math, way more than biology could ever be. Uh, and, and that's a true privilege. And like uh, Ramon said earlier, uh, with me as well, I grew up in Germany. Our education system was completely different than here. Uh, I couldn't speak English when I first came here. And, um, but my parents, uh, who were both doctors, never pushed me uh, uh, to learn. They always saw it as a given. It's it's something that I didn't even have a choice about. There was no conversation in our house about going to school. It was it was like brushing your teeth. It was like breathing breathing air. That's something that you just did. Um, and uh, I'm the product of that. And I, the reason why I ended up in the United States is because I had my mind opened uh, by the educational process at home, and uh, which which uh, encouraged me to, you know, come here, get on a plane and travel to this foreign country that I had no idea about. And uh, so, so that's what you should keep your mind on. Uh, the fact that every step you take in your educational process will form you as a human being, will help you find your journey and find your path. Let's do what I really wanted to do today, and I ended up um, taking some music classes and jazz and studying opera and classical. And then my parents couldn't afford to help me complete college, so I had to wait tables and sing on the side. And that's how I became the singer. And all of a sudden, I started to enjoy it even more as a profession, uh, profess, you get what I'm saying, profession. profession. And um, it just took over my life. Sometime my plan is different from, well, God's plan is bigger than my plan. So it was meant for me to do what I'm doing. And I even got two scholarships to go back to school. I'm always trying to go back, and every time I would try to go back, then something major would happen with my career. So for me, everything I learned in school about singing in my craft taught me about breathing and how to reach past the fourth row and go all the way out. Like I can play Carnegie Hall or Hollywood Bowl and reach the whole audience because of my training. And um, I, I think, I can't wait to go back to school to learn more about singing, even though I feel, everyone feels, oh, you're this, this, that. I always feel there's more I can learn and more that I can do. And I learned more outside of school. I had to take away everything. And why are your notes so proper? Why are you pronunciating everything in R and B? You know, and, and like, this is a hip hop song. Why are you saying it like that? 
this is not Broadway, you know. I made it on Broadway. I, I've done so much with my singing in different genres of music and work with different people just because I felt uh, I learned how to hustle. Meaning other singers would teach me how to do a time step before the audition or uh, lead, make sure your arm goes out here and you'll get the job. You get what I mean? So education comes in different forms, but it is great when you can study Leontine Price and you know, oh, all these wonderful singers sing Carmen on film in your class or one student, my teacher Norma Levester, hollering at me with her glasses. You know, it's just a great experience. So education taught me a lot. I'm always wanting it and I can't go, wait to go back, but it's not gonna happen anytime soon. But I, that's because my path is what it is right now. So, and I get to do everything that I've ever wanted to do. But again, just have faith and dream big and go for it. And that's what I did. The more authentic you are. You know, so many of us are trying to fit into some sort of mold and it just never works. It just never works. Be you because the world is waiting for you. And if you could really believe that, it will change the scope of everything. I work in Hollywood where I don't look like none of them girls. I don't wear the same size as none of them girls. I'm, and I'm still, I get jobs because I'm Kim Coles. Because I was just being me. So just be you. You have no idea what's waiting for you if you just do that. That sounds good. Yeah. I like that. Uh, my advice um, is, or the advice that I've taken to, to heart, is uh, always keep your shoes tied. What does that mean? Anybody tell me what that means? There you go. There you go. Be ready. Always be ready. Opportunities present themselves at the most ridiculous moments, and you never know when a door might open or a window, uh, but you got to be ready to jump. So I've always been ready. Honesty. Be honest. It, the lie going to unshrivel. It's just going to fall apart. So just tell, be transparent and honest. Uh, people love it. They love that, that rawness of who you are. I, I've been here because I said, look, I can't be Beyonce. I can't be this person. I have to be me or it ain't going to work. And everyone's going to see it. And I'm going to look funny trying to be something I'm not. So. Just be transparent, honest. It lasts, it goes long, the doors open. It's an endless path of, of, of finding out more about yourself when you're open and honest. So, honesty, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big one. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I had a personal moment. Um, but uh, for me, yeah. So, for me, I, it, it keeps coming back to me. So again, I'll be honest, even in this moment, instead of trying to force another answer, uh, serve. Um, I, can, I can say, again, honestly, that um, my life changed, uh, and my life changed significantly, and it changed for the better, and I think it changed most profoundly when I accepted and admitted that, uh, that my life needed to be about service. Uh, I, I, I was told once by a mentor that, that um, where we go is a reflection of the five people around us and the books that we read. Hey. Hey. I, would, I would just say very, very quickly that some of you are surrounded by people that will not help you get where you're trying to go. And the quicker you remove them from your circle, the faster you will open up space to get to where you're going. If you look around, you do it right now. Do it right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Sit there might be some people closest to you, of course. If you, if you look around on Facebook, how many of you all have looked around and like you look at your friend and you like y'all crazy as hell, and that means you're crazy as hell. That's what that means. And so just understand it, it's almost like being the general manager of, of a pro sports team. You don't pick a team just because you like the Cats. You pick a team that you want to win the championship. And you can't have somebody on your team that can't ball 
and then you wonder why are we not going anywhere. Um, some people you have to love enough to give them life side, lifetime courtside seats to watch you play. Uh, I love you, I want you in my space, but you can't go. Uh, so enjoy this courtside seat and get out of my way. Uh, and the moment that you decide to learn how to play, play. Uh, and then what you read, what you consume. And, and just understand that learning is not about what, what are your grades. It's do you have a passion and culture for learning? Which means do you wake up in the morning excited about what you don't know? Um, I love being in a room where I am the least intelligent person in the room because I'm guaranteed to walk out with something that I didn't have before I came in. And so never be intimidated when you're in spaces where people know more. Be excited about it. And then jump every time you can to be able to consume as much as you can. Because you can't, when you start talking about service, you can't give what you don't have. And I'm so tired of people talking about serving and they ain't got nothing. Save yourself and then give what you have to those that you, when, when you've been able to create. So I'm passing a plate right now. Amen. 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 Amen.